Ifom Onyeje Kwe, fixed income securities trader at UBA, joins us now to do an opening call to the debt and currency markets. Good morning, Ifom. Now, do a wrap up of the week for us and give us your outlook for next week. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, the fixed income market this week was highly liquid. Contributing to this liquidity was additional FAC allocation payments for VAT for state and local governments coming in on Monday. And also the huge inflows of Treasury bills maturities of over 930 billion that came in on Thursday. Hence, um, we saw bullish runs across the primary and secondary market as market participants looked for where to invest their excess liquidity. In the primary market, there was an NTB and OMO auction, NTB auction on Wednesday and OMO auction on Thursday. At the NTB auction, rates were maintained on the 91-day and 182-day bill at 3% and 4% respectively, whereas it declined on the one-year bill to 5.70% from 6.4542%. And at the OMO auction, we saw rates declined on all tenors offered on the shorter, the medium tenor and longer tenor bill to 11.44, 11.56, and 13% from 11.45, 11.59, and 11.6%. Also in the secondary market, we saw bullish runs observed all through the week. The bullish runs also was observed in the bond space where um, investors were looking for medium to longer tenor bill, especially on the 2029 and 2049 bills. So we saw buying sentiments all across all maturities in the bond and treasury bill space. My outlook for the week, coming into, because today is the last um, trading day for the week and month, so going into next world, I expect mixed sentiments as um, the, the maturities that, come, that will come in in March and April are not as much as came in in January and February. So the market will be segmented according to investor demand. The people that are short on liquidity would experience um, bearish runs. They would sell off some of their positions in order to provide for liquidity. Whereas the people that also need to um, invest their, their excess funds will experience bullish runs in their end. Fixed income securities trader at UBA. Thanks for giving us those updates there. All right, and um, for updates on today's trading activities at the Nigerian equities market, um, let's cross over now to the stock exchange temple is there. Hello, Temple. Well, good morning. Just wondering what sentiment you have observed this morning, particularly with the news of coronavirus now in Lagos. Well, Shimeze, we are seeing some heavy sell-off in the market. Uh, the volume of transaction that we've seen traded so far this morning is actually higher compared to what we saw at about this time uh, yes, uh, yesterday uh, in the market. We've seen some uh, uh, 414 uh, million naira uh, worth of transactions so far compared to 100 and uh, something uh, million naira worth of transactions that we saw about this time uh, yesterday in the market. And of course, uh, the negative effect, if, if negative effect is being felt on uh, the uh, tier one names in the banking segment of the market and of course as uh, the uh, consumer good names that you have in the market. The likes of Zenit, which was around uh, 19 Naira yesterday, is now trending around 18 Naira. Uh, and of course, this is likely to continue to push the uh, indices uh, below the uh, appreciable level that we've seen it before. You recall that yesterday it was at 27, it dropped below 27,000 psychological line and with the uh, effect of the news of coronavirus now setting into the market, uh, that could actually uh, bring about some tail spinning. We know that yesterday we also dropped to a negative position in terms of the year-to-date performance. Uh, we're down some 0.13% yesterday to year, in terms of year-to-date performance as opposed to uh, when we had some 10 point something percentage year-to-date performance as at the 20th of January uh, this year. So basically all the gains that we've seen in uh, January, which has been eroded so far this week, uh, is probably likely to continue uh, as, as things are going. And probably that's the way we will end uh, this Friday right now, Chimeze. Uh, all right, Temple, let's just hope that this uh, coronavirus um, thing does not escalate. Busy. All right, now let's cross over to London for updates on developments there. And Juliana Olayinka is standing by to give us updates. Good morning, Juliana. The coronavirus outbreak is still top of the agenda, especially here in Lagos, where the case has been confirmed. But owners of disinfectant brands are making great sales. 
Bring us up to speed with companies benefiting from this and how their stocks are doing in the market as shares face worst week since 2008. Well, to be greedy when others are fearful, that's a Warren uh, Buffet um, uh, sentiment that's uh, doing the rounds this week. And as you said, yes, even though a trillion dollars has been wiped off global markets, there are, of course, some investors and shares that are doing really well. Uh, first of all, of course, there hasn't been a virus, um, there hasn't been a vaccine uh, that has been found yet. So a lot of um, pharmaceutical companies are doing particularly well. Uh, there's one U.S. pharmaceutical group called Moderna. Their share have risen um, over 50% over the last five days. There seems to be a global race to find uh, the first cure. I believe Australia um, are doing so far so good, but there are others that are following. And uh, for those who are trying to keep themselves pretty clean, yes, as you said, sales of disinfectants are doing very, very well. A lot of people are buying uh, products that they can wipe down when they're getting on the underground and the tube. And also as well, disinfectants uh, for hands are doing pretty good. Zoom. Now, they're a company um, that offer teleconference calls and um, uh, non-interface meetings. Their sales over the past couple of weeks have jumped 50 percent to a record high, particularly in Asia, because people, of course, are not going into work. Uh, so the Zoom app and any other tele teleconference apps are doing well. And telemedicine. Now, telemedicine has uh, been taking a giant leap over the past couple of years, but there are lots of companies net well now that are doing exceptionally well, um, particularly in Europe. A lot of people with symptoms that don't want to go to the doctors. A lot of people in the UK, even myself today, have received um, text messages from doctors saying, don't come into the surgery. Um, so if you're in that business, you're doing exceptionally well too. So yes, there is a silver lining in every dark cloud. All right, Juliana. Now, today we expect to see full-year financial results from companies like British Airways owner IAG, Rolls-Royce, uh, Veolink, Iberia, Man Group, and, of course, the London Stock Exchange. Which of these results are investors seriously looking out for? Well, as you said, yeah, it's a busy uh, corporate day in London, but the biggest headline is the International Consolidated Airlines Group. Yes, the BA owner. Just before I came into the studio, I believe they have actually released um, their results. And I believe, if I'm correct, that they have shown a 40% drop in profits in 2019. Not everything um, has to do um, with COVID-19. I believe they had a massive pension payout, which they had to release, but their shares are down more than 8% of course, um, International Consolidated Airlines Group, as well as the other travel firms, they're taking the lion's share of the plunge when it comes to this COVID-19 um, issue. So lots of people will be analysing their data towards the end of the day. And LSE, a lot of people expecting um, to hear whether or not they will be shortening trading hours. That's been a huge debate um, from the end of last year because they believe that traders have got way too much pressure on them. And uh, in some cases, it's been leading to extreme circumstances. At the moment, the trading day is from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. GMT, and that may likely change when they announce their full-year report. All right, Juliana, just before I let you go, the Competition and Markets Authority are announcing an update on leasehold properties today, which have seen some homeowners paying thousands of pounds in ground rent when the original, uh, the original charge was a lot less. What are the expectations from this? Well, this is this is an interesting story, and uh, anybody who's in the property uh, market will be watching this quite closely. If you are in England and Wales, there are two ways of buying a property, either freehold or leasehold. If you are a leasehold property owner, you only own uh, the property. You don't own the land um, that the property sits on. You're essentially leasing it or renting it from the freehold owner, and you can do this for 10 years, 100 years, even 1,000 years. Um, but what the Competition and Marketing Authority have noticed is that uh, some, um, some people are charging way too much um, to these uh, tenants and are doubling uh, the amount of money they're receiving uh, within 10 years. So they're really putting a stop on this and they're just coming to the end of um, quite a strong agreement that will change the way people are buying property in the UK over the next couple of months. Thanks, Juliana, for those updates. We'll see you again at 1.30. Thank <music> you.